Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Today I'm going to talk about the new error curve mini view in Synthize, which you don't even see quite yet. It goes down here. So far, we've just opened a new shot. It's one of my standard stock test shots. And we're going to just run a basic auto track on it. And now as soon as that completes, you see that the error curve mini view has appeared down here. And it's giving you a bunch of information about this shot. First off, you notice that the total overall scene error is shown down here, the 0.819 horizontal pixels. And it's also color-coded as green. And in the error curve mini view, there are a couple of preferences that let you set what you want to have for those different levels of that give you the, the green yellow or red for the color coding. And if you look through this curve, you'll see there's a little dashed line there that's the current frame. And we can just drag in there to go to different spots. And in particular, we might want to go out here where there's a red spike that's showing you that there's a problem in that tracking in that area that you probably want to investigate. So this gives you a quick way of identifying problem areas in the overall tracking of the shot. So now let's show some other things that this view can do. And I'm just going, this is unfortunately off the bottom, I'm going to uh, sort by error mode of the, the view menu there for the trackers. And I'm going to go to the tracker panel and right now nothing is selected. I'm just going to hit the down arrow on the keyboard and that's going to give me the worst tracker. And you can see down here there is this 10.005 HPix that is reflecting the maximum error on any given frame for that particular tracker. And you notice down here on the tracker panel there's a number that's also a total error number for the tracker, but that's the root mean square or average error. So these two different, th there are two different kinds of numbers here. In the error view, it's the maximum. That tells you the overall scaling of this error view, and that's more convenient for this particular view. So it's not, not the same number there. So if I just go and, and drag the current time back into the area where this tracker is valid, You'll see that now you're seeing the error on each individual frame. That's what this value is here on the tracker panel. 7.322 is the error on this particular frame. So if I went to the beginning of the shot, you'll see that's where this maximum error is. And that gives you an idea this uh, tracker needs a little work. If you don't see it immediately, of course, you can just flash it. You'll see that it's up on that branch of the tree, so it's waving around actually in the wind, so it's not really a tracker that we want to keep around. If we want, we can keep on scrolling through these trackers in order of decreasing R. I'm just hitting the down key again. You know, this is something you've always been able to do. And you see that this mini view gives you a nice little way to see what the errors are and what's going on. Now, if I go and select a bunch of them, you'll see that it's still, this view is always going to show you the maximum error of all the selected trackers. And again, that's the value. And you can see some of the individual spikes here. Now, this mini tracker view isn't really intended to give you the full details of, of what's going on and what to address here. You know, for that, as always, you want to go and use the tracker, the uh, graph editor, and look at those tracker error curves directly. You can use the isolate mode of the graph editor to go and investigate which particular trackers are responsible for these errors, and then be able to adjust them, uh, either correct the tracking or uh, just make the tracker invalid on those particular frames. So the error curve is meant to be a complement 
to the graph editor, a quick way to, to see what's going on while you're doing other stuff. But it's not, it's not intended to be the last word, just a, a little helpful feature to that also. So if I select all of the trackers, you'll notice I see this maximum value there, very large. Again, we got the spike down there at the end. And I just want to contrast what you get with select all, where you're seeing the worst of all the trackers. And, and I got all of them selected just using control A. I use control D, and that selects none of them. And when none of them are selected, that gets you back to this other curve, which is the average error for each frame across all of the different trackers that are valid on it. So it's two different sorts of numbers. All is the maximum, and with none, it's the average error. In both cases, you see that you got some work to do out there at the end. And one way to just quickly tell which, which you're looking at at any point in time, aside from the values you're color coding, is you see that when none of them are selected, you get this capital, all uppercase H picks down there. Um, if you've got some or all of them selected, you're just getting the lowercase. So you can just quickly identify which of them you've got without trying to figure out what you really have selected or not. Now, if I just go and create a tracker, and I start tracking it through the shot, you notice now the mini tracker view, the mini error view there, is showing the figure of merit of this tracker, which is giving you an idea of how well the pattern is matching up with each individual frame, when well, that value gets, gets to be larger then the tracking isn't going to be as good and eventually you'll probably lose track altogether. So, you know, here I've, I've gone to the key every 12 frames mode and you can see the effect that that's having on the figure of merit because now you've got additional keys set each time and basically the figure of merit is zero on those keys and you're seeing that actually keeps the figure of merit much more closely bounded because it's you're periodically resetting the key. Now, if I was doing this for real, I'd want to go and naturally adjust those key locations so that it stays on the right location. You know, I just go and adjust each one a little bit. But the again, the little error curve just gives you some quick feedback as to what's going on without having to go to the graph editor. Of course, you could do the, uh, the graph editor and the camera view at the same time and all, but this just gives you a quick look. Now, one other thing to this, the error curve here, by default, it's showing the entire range of frames, but actually, it, it shows the playback range as set by the little begin and end markers. You know, if I was just playing the shot, it would be playing back and forth between those little markers. But those markers are also used to set the range for the error curve mini view. So you can adjust that to zoom into some particular area of the shot if you like to. And just for your convenience, if you want to reset those playback markers back to the full range of the shot. You can just right double click in the error curve mini view and it just resets them back and that's a little extra piece of functionality that's useful in general. Now one other thing, if you've got a very large shot with you know thousands of trackers, thousands of frames, it's conceivable that the time required to compute and display this mini view could, could build up 
depending on what machine you've got and so on. There is a little preference that lets you say I only want to show the curve if you only got a single cur a single tracker selected and that way it's not going to take very long to compute and in that particular mode if you've got no trackers selected rather than going and doing again this big extensive calculation to do this it's going to do nothing so if you do want to get this display then you would select all of the trackers that's the control a and in that case instead of giving you the maximum view when you've got that preference turned on then it'll give you the, uh, the this average curve instead the average value instead so that gives you the control over that particular circumstance so hopefully that gives you an idea now of some of the things you can do with the little mini view here it's kind of handy and it's just a, a quick way to get an idea of what's going on in your scene. Thanks. Have a great day.